The bottom line is Harry Bennett's job for the Ford Motor Company for decades was to keep the place union free. As he approached his 70th birthday, this is in 1930, Henry Ford realized that his son, Edsel, whom he was handing over to the, the company, just really didn't have the toughness in him to deal with the very tough issues, to deal with the company's workers, their competitors, the communists who were trying to infiltrate the unions, the unionists. He didn't have it, so uh, Henry Ford brought in this guy, Harry Bennett. And he put Harry Bennett in, some, in charge of something called the service department, which is really nothing, just plant security. Bear in mind, this plant in Dearborn had, around Dearborn, had 100,000 workers. So Bennett welded up a lot of power. He hired between three and 5,000 security guards, is what he called them. Um, and because Ford was the only game in town, uh, Bennett, by way of that, had tremendous political clout uh, in the state of uh, in the state of Michigan. Then, at one point, uh, the Detroit family boss, this guy Gaspar Milazzo, was gunned down as part of the Castellamiers War. It looked like he would get bad, and Ford stupidly told Bennett, "Get in contact with these guys and try to solve this problem. We can't have people running around shooting each other in the street. I don't want this pouring off into my factory. Do something." Bennett contacted the new boss, Chet Lamar, and they hit it off. I mean, they liked each other immediately. So Bennett awarded Lamar a Ford dealership and the fruit concession inside the river plant. Bear in mind now, there's 100,000 people working there, and they can't leave once they go. And things were very different in those days. So fruit concession is a lot more than it sounds like, but also the Ford dealership. Uh, so he had peace with those guys. That didn't last long because Le Maire was murdered in 1931. Uh, he then made pals with Tony Deanna, who was a, a local hood who looked like he was up and coming. He also gave Deanna uh, a dealership and an exclusive contract to haul Ford cars from the plant to the other plants. Deanna kept that contract for 20 years, maybe more. In 1932, uh, he, Bennett, uh, became friends with Joe Adonis, a New York mobster who controlled the automotive, automotive conveying company. They brought cars all across the United States from the factories to the plants. It was a big company. The company uh, was awarded exclusive rights to, this is, we're talking about Adonis's company, Automotive Conveying, exclusive rights to transport cars from Ford's plant. Bennett also made the mistake of hiring this nasty hood, Peter Lacovelli, uh, to work as guards on the plant. But once they got in there, they wanted more, and he wanted all his men to have $9 an hour. It was a lot of money in 1930s. $9 an hour is incredible. Uh, it was a mistake. It was a miscalculation. Bennett didn't think this would happen, but it did. So he had to turn to... Uh, when he tried to do something, by the way, they tried to murder him. They ran him off the road at one point. Uh, it was pretty bad. He turned to Joe Adonis and he said, well, you got to do something. And Adonis got them to back off. Uh, a few years later, Etzel Ford died and his son Henry II took over. And one of his first acts was to fire Bennett. But uh, Adonis and Deanna kept their contracts, their hauling contracts. In 1951, Adonis was hauled before the Kefauver Committee to ask, answer questions about Ford and him. And, uh, he said he had sold the business to another guy. The guy was Charlie Sierra, a gangster. By 1956, the government had just had it with Adonis, and he was deported uh, out of the country, back to Italy.